Today we're just going to run through a couple of ideas that we've had for our decoupled environment, um, especially with the especially with the focus on the editors today. So it's a topic that I think doesn't get enough attention, actually. Um, my name is Jeremy Chinquist. I'm actually a project manager at Dronomics in Vienna. Um, I've got an education, master's degree, bachelor of arts, um, as well as I do a lot of work with the Drupal Austria community and a, lot of, and a few other organizations as well. So um, we have a decoupled setup, uh, Lupus decoupled content pool and uh, a normal Drupal decoupled Drupal. Um, one of the challenges that we face is that the editors themselves lose context when they're in the front end. They um, just have the front end and that's it. So decoupled environments tend to just leave them hanging. Um, things like the edit button, the delete button for uh, the preview methods, all of those things are just not there when you're looking at a website that's a decoupled website. Um, other information as well is missing. Publishing status, date time, moderation status, revisions, all of that stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to first, before I go into our solution, I'd like to actually talk about the fact that we have several different projects that we're doing with decoupled solutions. Uh, Valuita, Te, Wirtschaftsverlag, Career, um, which is a larger media house in Austria. We've worked with all of these people and have exchanged information, so um, yeah, we have several projects. Developers love to have decoupled solutions. Why? All of these reasons, performance, security, all of these things help us a lot and make the project really cool. However, um, the editors, on the they tend to start to take two browsers in order to be able to preview their content on the front end after changing it. Um, one of the biggest things that I've actually seen from journalists is that they will publish content so that they can preview it and then take it down. Um, in the worst case scenario, actually, Google found it and already indexed it. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't want to have that type of stuff. Um, in the worst case scenarios, I've actually seen that the journalists get very frustrated and will even reject the CMS. I mean, we've all heard that people have complained about Drupal a lot. And uh, yeah, trying to mitigate those frustrations is a big part of our work. So how can we ma make that experience be optimized um, in a decoupled environment? Um, we're going to enable the content creators to have that access that they need. Um, as well as giving them information about uh, publishing status and other things like that uh, in the decoupled front end. So one of the things that we cannot lose track of, however, is you have to give the search engines and the anonymous readers also the same experience of the decoupled front end without detracting from it. So. Um, I'm going to skip over this slide. You can take a look at it. As I said on the drewnomics.com website, we've actually I've published the slides so you could download them. Just go to drewnomics.com slash blog. And it's one of it's the top blog entry at the moment. So here's one of our previews. Um, this is actually a decoupled site that we have live, uh, valuate.te. Um, as you can see, very basic, but we've got the um, the tabs from the back end that are loaded. So actually the person is logged in at this point in the front end and pulling Drupal um, content, Drupal administrative, the Drupal administrative menu for that content. How are we doing that? Um, we have a setup so that you go to a URL um, similar to login, but in the front end you actually click on the button that will load the resource. It's just a simple, quick loading so that you're loading the resources. And then it's going to check the back end. Are you logged in as an editor or 
a content a, a contributor. Uh, if not, it's going to direct you to the back end that we have and ask you to log in there. If you're already logged in there, that's fine. You're good to go. And then you can actually go on to your content. And at this point, you're going to be loading the resources. So we've optimized for Google. We've optimized for the anonymous user. And um, now we're loading at least some information for the content editor that, I that they need on the front end. It doesn't look wonderful. It's just the Drupal tabs at this point. So we're going to take it a step further in the next couple of months here. Um, however, actually, one of our solutions that we've done for um, Virchefs for Log is to, um, when you're logged in, we are not loading the advertisements. We're actually presenting some metadata about the advertisements as well. There's a couple other optimizations in there, but uh, we got feedback that the um, for the content creator, being able to see the ad ID number was a good thing so that they could kind of keep that in, in their mind, um, see what advertisements they're loading for that page. And keep in mind that this is also one of six different websites that's pulling from a content pool backend, so it's a decoupled setup. And we have six different websites, all of them with different IDs and such. Um, it's good to have this type of information for those content editors and the site administrators. Um, we've had a discussion as well about simply loading the admin toolbar in the front end. And I will come back to that in a few minutes. So our proposed solution for the next couple of months, we are going to move those tabs that are loaded into something that's more of a custom design the reason for this is to, um, we want to highlight the things that the content creator needs actually right away. Um, we want to give them the ability to do one click to get to the edit and to have it in a situation where it's, um, even if you scroll down, it's still available. Um, we're actually going to improve on the logout that we have at the moment so you can log out and keep a minimum of the toolbar active, or you can log out completely and have it hidden. Um, and we'll see how that's going to be adopted as well. So, I mean, we're also really trying to um, get some feedback on this. I would love to have feedback later on. Um, I, yeah, we'll come back to that. <laughs> So we're going to improve the placement, we're going to make it more compact, and we're going to try to, uh, we're going to improve the usability of those tabs, make them available. Um, a couple of other things that we've made improvements on, so because this is a decoupled environment, uh, in the back end we've given a link to the API output that's available for content creators. Uh, they can literally see what the JSON output looks like that will be passed to the front end. They have that available. Um, for some of the product owners that I have, I've actually gotten feedback that they can see that too and then they can tell us if there's something wrong there or they've expected something. So some of them are very active about using it. Um, we've made a couple of other, this is our lupus distribution and we've made a couple of uh, good enhancements to the, the top menu as well. Um, we've given a handbook there, which the handbook will um, give the not only the content creators, but also the, the product owners on their side um, valuable information as to how this website is supposed to be used. Um, because it's a decoupled environment, and actually, I should have mentioned this earlier, it's not only a decoupled environment in this case, but it's a statically generated front end. So um, what's actually happening is you'll edit something in the Drupal system, and a person who is logged in will get that updated stuff immediately, will see it in the front end immediately, but um, for anybody else who's not logged in and not loading those resources, 
um, the site is statically generated and every 10 minutes or so, the static generation will be triggered on cron run, updates the front end, it's static, it's loading fast, but the people who are logged in get the information that they need as well. So that's why we have these zero changes up in the top there. Um, we're informing the content editor as well that there are some things, uh, well, if in this case there's everything in the front end is updated, right now you're seeing the updated front end. Yeah. Um, wow, this presentation has gone really fast. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, we have to leave you hanging there because the next step for us is uh, to actually implement this toolbar to get feedback, to get feedback from the editors uh, as well, but hopefully to get also um, feedback that will make them feel more comfortable with using Drupal, using the decoupled setup that we've had because, of course, we want to have the journalists happy. Um, yeah. So I had a really interesting talk yesterday with Fabian Franz. A few of you might know him. Uh, if you don't, please look him up. He's a very fascinating person. Um, as we were discussing, he said, okay, well, our solution is to bring the back end to the front end. We're loading it on the front end. And he said, no, 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 you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, bring the, uh, yeah, basically reverse it, keep the editors in the back end, he said, and you're going to load the front end into the back end. It's an interesting approach. Uh, actually, my colleague and the CEO of our company, Wolfgang Ziegler, you might know him as Fago, sitting up in front here. Uh, <laughs> he actually, um, had a longer discussion about it too, and so we're going to possibly reverse it, see about it, but um, as I said, I'd be also interested in getting other people's approaches to it, um, your ideas. So I'd like to open this up. Okay, a few references first. Um, I'd like to actually open this up to a uh, conversation. Um, if there's enough interest generated, I could even see about organizing a, a, a boff tomorrow, um, or people can just simply come up and talk to me on it, but uh, I'd be really happy to take your questions now. Hi, uh, so uh, you didn't, um, you didn't mention explicitly inline editing, uh, that sort of like clicking things and, and changing them. I'm guessing there's some aspect of, of, of that going going on here? Not actually in the front end. Not in the front end. No. So what we d the, when you mentioned taking the front end to the back end, what we did is um, on a project to make it feel not like the front end, but actually in the admin system, is we heavily use the form API to sort of have custom fields that looked like the front end and then populated other ones and and that sort of that sort of stuff going on so it's yeah it's we have we haven't mixed that but i mean um that's more of a technical honestly i'm not involved in the technical aspect of it at this moment so um i would really ask that you come and talk to wolfgang about it because yeah. he would be more able to answer the implementation but yeah the inline editing part is really like just cl clicking especially for headers and things was really what um Okay. What makes a big difference to some of our clients? Okay, okay. Um, maybe you could also post in there like a link to your the the website that you actually developed for it or something. Right. Or Next question. Anyone? Or I'll read it from the app. One minute. Okay. One question is: What about front end preview link from the Drupal backend? The next JS for Drupal provide this feature, mention this as inline preview but into the editing interface? As far as I understand the preview, it actually is working. I hope that Wolfgang is, yes, good, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so there is the preview link in the back end and if you click on it, you can see it as it would be a normal preview. Okay. 
Uh, true. Um, Wolfgang mentioned that we just do a redirect so that you do actually see it in the front end. It's the permissions are set up that way. Um, yeah, so you get the preview. All right, the next one is what's wrong with two windows? As a developer, we usually have code and browser. <laughs> <laughs> Having um, yourself logged out in a second window to be looking at it is really the problem um, because I've seen it all too often that an editor will actually publish the content so they can look at it in the front end separately and it, I guess that's that's the main point is that they've <coughs> they've actually published the content which is a really big no-go for me I I don't want to see it indexed on Google simply because they need to have a preview all right anyone else have a question I think that's it well, I'm available for talking, so if anyone wants to come up. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you.